So this is, like I said, this was the problem I handed out in class. Um, and if you weren't in class this week or last week, then this is also, this PDF is in course STEM. Okay. So it's in the unit one overview link. So go there. Um, but we're going to take, it's a small data set. This is, um, it says the ages of all, that's an important word for us here. So the ages of all patients in the isolation ward of the hospital. Um, and we're going to start with just that finding the center of the data. So the mean and median from chapter three, and then the spread of the data, the variance and standard deviation. And then we'll pick up those concepts from four on the skewness coefficients. Um, so why is it important that it says all patients? Because that means that we are dealing with a population here and not a sample. Okay, so population is everyone. Um, and so like this should actually, instead of S, it should be sigma. Oh, that was an awful drawing of that. Let me try again. So it should be this guy here. Okay, and same thing over there. All right, so here we go. Find the mean. Well, how do we find our mean? Well, our mean is just the sum of all the values divided by N. So we're going to come over here to our patient's age. We're going to sum these up. And y'all are going to see me keep looking because I have my answer key over here. So I don't have to do this math while y'all wait on me. So the sum of all their ages is 140. Okay. And our N is five, right? One, two, three, four, five. So 140 divided by five, giving our patients a mean age of 28 years old. Okay. So that's the first answer for A. Any questions on finding a mean before I move on? We're good. Okay. The median of the data. So I did notice on a couple of you when you were emailing me questions from your connect work, that um, you forgot one important thing with the median. Remember the median is the value in the middle, okay? But in order to determine what's in the middle, you have to first rank or sort your data in ascending order. So smallest to largest. Um, luckily for this problem, that's already done for us. And, okay, I don't know why it's telling me that. Um, and since we have an odd number of observations, it's simply the value right here of 26. So 26 is the median for this data set. Keep in mind, if you have an even number, then you take the two values that are in the middle and you get their average, okay? And that becomes the median for that data set. So now we're going to move on to calculating our variance. And so let me remind you of our formula here. So we have the lowercase sigma, so sigma squared equals the sum of all our x values minus our population mean squared divided by n. Now in class, when I did variance, we were dealing with samples. And so the difference then is if this were a sample instead of a population, our denominator is n minus one. But that's really the only difference um, between these two. So I'm going to go back up here to the chart. Again, that's how I recommend um, that you work these problems. Let me change my color real quick. So all we're doing is we're going down this first column, so column one here, and we are subtracting the mean, 28, from each of these values. So this becomes 13 minus 28 equals minus 28 equals, so on, all the way down. And if you calculate all of this out, you would get negative 15, negative six, negative two, positive 10, and positive 13, okay? And I did say in class, because the numbers we were dealing with were not even, right? They were kind of messy with four decimal places out. So um, I do tend to work these problems. Like when I have that minus 15, I'm going to go ahead and square it so that I'm not putting it in my calculator multiple times. So 15 squared is 225. We have 36. We have 4, 100, and 169. So, oh. Well, 
Don't tell me that my pen's dead. Maybe that's what that message was telling me a second ago. It's at 100%. There we go. So 169. Now, again, looking at my formula, I need the sum of all of those differences uh, from the population mean squared. So I'm going to sum all of this up and I would get 534. So going back down to my equation, then that's my numerator. And again, I just think this method is a lot, um, a simpler way for you guys to calculate these things instead of you trying to write everything into that formula all together and making a mathematical error. So 534 divided by five gives us a variance of 106.8 squared years because we're talking to patient's age, right? So that makes no sense. It doesn't really have any meaning. And that's why standard deviation is actually um, the tool that we use the most often to talk about the spread in our data. And so pretty easy here. It's a sigma. It's simply the square root of our variance. So in this case, the square root of 106.8 which equals 10.33. So that's the... Patients' ages are 10 years plus or minus away from the population mean, okay? So that's the first part. That's all chapter three. So again, let's get to the newer stuff. Let's get to the chapter four stuff. Let's uh, we'll be purple this time. So we, again, when we're talking about our data, another way we can describe it is the skewness of the data. So we can have positively skewed, negatively skewed, right? And I told you guys that your coefficients are going to be somewhere between positive three and minus three. Um, you sometimes will get a coefficient of zero, which indicates then that our data is perfectly symmetrical, where the mean equals the median. Uh, Pearson's formula is a little more simple. So let me remind you of that. So the skewness for Pearson is three times the population mean minus the median. And again, it looked a little different in class simply because we were doing um, a sample, okay? And then we're gonna divide by the population's standard deviation, okay? Um, so we already have these numbers. If we scroll back up, right, our mean is 28, our median is 26. So plug that in, three times 28 minus 26. And then we also already found our standard deviation of 10.33. Okay, so this becomes two, two times three is six. So we have six divided by 10.33. And so our skewness coefficient using Pearson's method is a positive 0 0.581. Okay, that would be our answer. So for his, you know, we're just talking like right here, right, 0.581. So we would call this slightly positive. It's just over zero. Okay, there's a slightly positive skew um, on this data set. All right, and then we get to the other one, <laughs> the software method, which does give us um, a better representation, but it also requires a little bit more work. So let me remind you of this formula. We take our number of observations here, we divide by the product of n minus one and n minus two. And then all of this gets multiplied times the sum of our x's minus our population mean divided by my standard deviation cubed. And then I sum that up. And so again, I recommend that we just keep working down in our little chart here. Um, so this is columns two and three. So column four here is just taking column two and dividing by the standard deviation that we already found in part D, which was 10.33. So I'm gonna write this up here so we remember. So that's what we're doing now. We're gonna divide by 10.33. 
all the way down. Okay. Um, and we would get, and let me get to my cheat sheet here. Negative 1.452. Negative 0 0.581, negative 0 0.194, 0 0.968, and 1.258. For our final column here, column 5, we're taking the values in column 4, and we are cubing them. So again, I would work this way and then go down, because I already have that number of negative 1.452 in my calculator. I'm going to go ahead and cube it, and I would get negative 3.0613. Take 581, cube it. 9, oops, sorry, 196. And then 007, 0907, and then 1991. And this is the column then, sorry, I somehow keep, I must be hitting something on my keyboard down here to get from the pencil to the eraser. So I'm going to sum up all of these values and I would get negative 0 0.3663. So back down to my formula. So my skewness equals. Um, again, our n is 5, okay? So we'll, this side will be 5 divided by the product of 5 minus 1 and 5 minus 2. And all of this will be multiplied times what we just found, the negative 0.3663, okay? And so it becomes, what, 4 times 3, which is 12, so 5 over 12 times this. And when you work it all out, you would get a coefficient of negative 0 0.153. And again, I mentioned this in class, you're not going to get the same answer. And we actually say that this coefficient typically better represents our data. But now we would say that our data has a slightly negative skew because now we are right over here okay um and the one i think the one i did in class we were like it was positive for both but one was kind of like moderately positive and then one was like almost three it was like 2.8 or something like that so that's how we do those questions